Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear learners, I extend a very warm welcome to you all in this course on Sociology of Sanitation. This is the fifth lecture in the series of course on Sociology of Sanitation. It has a total of 10 lectures. In last fourth lecture, we discussed the relation between gender and sanitation, how sanitation is a general problem at the same time it is more problematic for women how keeping in mind the general aspect, the specific issues related to gender, gender equity and equality and all these issues, we can solve the problem of gender and sanitation that we discussed in our last lecture. Today's this fifth lecture is devoted to deciphering socialization and sanitation, the role of socialization in promoting sanitation that will be part of our discussion in today's lecture. Great philosopher Aristotle once said, man is by nature a social animal, unquote. Of course, man, he wants to explain it as an individual, man does not mean in this context simply man, not women, but individual is a social animal. Credit goes to socialization for converting individual into a social being. When we say that socialization process, it is not simply related to family, related to society, but it is related to general lifestyle of individual. He is socialized, any individual is socialized and his socialization process is required throughout his life. That is the beauty of socialization. Before we start discussing about the role of socialization in prom promoting sanitation in the society, let us discuss the concept of socialization as explained by different sociologists. First explanation is given by Ogburn. Ogburn defines socialization as socialization is the process by which the individual learns to conform to the norms of the group, unquote. When he says that first that individual learns, of course, we all know that Socialization is a process, it is not a concept, it is a process and it is a learning process. When Akban says that conform to learn means every society has its own norms, patterns and culture and members are supposed to adapt it, members are supposed to confirm its behavior according to the norms, patterns, culture of the values. So, it is compulsory for any individual for its survival in society that he or she is supposed to confirm his or her behavior with the norms and pattern which is already there in that society. Next definition is given by H. M. Johnson. Johnson says, socialization is a learning that enables the learners to perform social roles. Further, he says that a process by which individual acquire the already existing culture of the group they come into. Here, when in first part, he says that learners perform social roles. We all know that we are supposed to play different roles in our different lives and accordingly we are supposed to behave. As a father, we are supposed to behave in a particular way. As a teacher, we are supposed to behave in a particular way. As a daughter, as a son, as a colleague. So, accordingly, we are supposed to and that is why according to different roles, we are supposed to learn that okay, according to this particular role, I am supposed to behave in that particular way. According to this particular role, I am supposed to behave in that particular way. These are the different role specific learning process. In second part, he says that and what is important is that, that the existing culture of the group they come into. As we all know that when we enter any group, any cultural part, 
then we are supposed to adjust ourselves. It is not like that we will enter and then we will frame. If we have to accept the particular society, particular group, particular profession, we are supposed to adjust ourselves according to the already devised, already prevalent culture of that particular group. Next, A. W. Green explains socialization as socialization is the process by which the child acquires a cultural content along with selfhood and personality. What does it mean when we say that cultural content? For example, we are discussing socialization and sanitation. When child learns that, okay, in my society, this is the way we are supposed to greet, this is the way we are supposed to wash our hands, this is the way we are supposed to worship the God and Goddess, this is the way we are supposed to make our house clean and a number of other things. So, cultural content prevalent in every society that the child wants to learn. In that particular context, it is explained that socialization is an overall process which trains individual, which converts individual into a human being. This is how these definitions explain the concept socialization. As we all know that it is a process, so of course, it has different features. As a process socialization is having number of features. With the, these features, we can easily understand what is socialization and then we will try to fit it into the role of or place of sanitation. Then we will be able to discuss sanitation and socialization. As a first feature of socialization, it is said that it is a lifelong process. If you generally ask 10 people that when we start learning or till which age we keep on learning, you will ask 10 people, you will get 10 types of responses from them. But as a matter of fact, some may tell you it is in the initial stage, it is till the adulthood, it starts at the school level or whatever different type of answers you may get. But as a matter of fact, socialization is a lifelong process and it starts before birth, I repeat, it starts before birth and ends till death. When we say that it starts before birth, we are having a wonderful evidence of that. The son of Arjun, Abhibanyu, learned the tricks of chakra view when he was in the womb of his mother. So, Abhimanyu learned the skills of chakra view. This is the burning example that our learning process starts well before our birth. Even today, in different societies, there are different systems prevalent that when women are pregnant, they are advised to watch particular type of films, to read particular type of books, to listen particular type of matters, simply because it is assumed that it is going to help positively the nurturing of the children children learn during that phase. So, through e these examples, it is said that socialization is a lifelong process. It is not simply at initial stage we learn. Well, we learn more things during our initial stage, but at every stage we learn something. At initial stage, maybe we learn how to take food using left hand or right hand, how to sit properly, how to use hands or how to use mouth. But even then, after that, we learn how to interact with others, how to, what are those norms, patterns, cultural values prevalent in our society. Then at particular age, we start growing, then with interaction with others, then the according to the age, we start different things and it goes till the end of the life. For example, even the senior citizens, the senior people, they learn how to interact with the young children. For example, if first time one is becoming grandfather or grandmother, he or she learns how to behave like a grandfather or grandmother. When particular people of particular age, he or she is supposed to that do not behave like a child. It means it is expected that you have achieved that much age, you are supposed to behave in a particular way. So, these examples are sufficient to explain that it is a lifelong process and it starts before birth, ends till death. From that angle, it is said that it is a lifelong process. Next is, it is a continuous process. 
Of course, it is not like that, that getting the degree for example, that you may get particular degree, then you are relieved from that, you may get another or you may not. It is a continuous process means, every day you learn something, whenever we encounter any new situation, then you are supposed to or you belong to particular caste, particular religion, particular family group, then you are aware of all those things. But when you enter for example, any school, any college, academic professional life or anywhere, then you have to behave in a particular way that okay, I belong to this particular professional group and in this the greeting style is like that or in this particular system, we are supposed to sit in that particular way, we are not supposed to interact with others in that particular way, I used to interact in my previous institution. So, it is a continuous process and the same is there in family also, when you are in society, you keep on learning, you come across a new situation, new uh, arrangements in any particular society, new things. So, it is not only the cultural pattern, when for example, the arrival of the mobile, arrival of the computer, arrival of the IT, you keep on learning that well, with this particular thing, I am supposed to adjust. So, from that angle, it is said that it is a continuous process. Next stage, it is a learning process. Through socialization, you learn not only behavioral pattern, cultural traits prevalent in your society, at the same time, you learn how to control yourself. You all know that you are being controlled by the society. Dear learners, you directly or indirectly keep on thinking about LKK factor, that is, log kya kahenge that log kya kahenge or LKK factor is there to control you, that you know that I am being controlled by informal and formal means. And through socialization, you come to know that, well, I am supposed to behave in a particular way. Suppose in your society, as per system, you are not supposed to go for open defecation or you are not supposed to relieve yourself at any place, you are not supposed to throw your garbage any place, then you may think that okay, if I will throw that, others may, may not say, but if he keeps discussing among themselves or if any individual is passing comment, look what he is doing, look what she is doing or if and one sees in a particular way, directly or indirectly through their gesture we are being advised that look, in this society or in my culture, I am not supposed to behave in that particular way. In this society, open defecation is not considered as good. In this society, you throwing particular item is not good. These are the different things you supposed to learn. So, you are being controlled by society also. And as you all know that, these are the informal means, means when you are in formal life, in college, school or professional life, there are formal setting. For example, you may see any notice that if you disobey particular rule, you will be fined rupees 500 or if you throw any garbage, you will be fined, you are not supposed to, you will be punished, you will be fined. These are the clear formal rules and regulations to control you. In society, there is not that type of generally no rule that if you will do open defecation, you will be fined 500. But you think more about social norms and patterns that well, others should not be, others should not discuss my issue. We never want that I should be part of others discussion. If you think that yesterday I did any bad thing related to sanitation and today they all are talking about me, look she is behaving in that way, he is behaving in that way. So, we do not want to be discussed by others. So, in learning process in this context is that, we are not only learning how to behave in a proper way, how to maintain the good sanitation in the society, but indirectly we are being controlled directly or indirectly that well, I am not supposed to do that. If I will do, what will happen that I will keep on thinking. So, social control is also there. That is why I said that LKK factor keeps on controlling us, log kya kahenge. So, we do not want to be part of others discussion. This is part of the learning process. Next is transmission of culture. As we all know that culture is not inherited, culture is norms, patterns, values of any society. 
it is not inherited by any children from the father, it is a learning process. So, how do we learn culture? You are aware that well you know your culture, but have, a, have you ever thought that how did you learn that? There is no formal training, there is no uh, notice that well this, these are your cultural traits, but you learned knowingly and unknowingly through socialization process. The parents train their children that well this is all about our culture. Again the children when they become parents, they train their children. So, socialization transmits culture from one generation to another generation. So, it is a learning process that well in my society, God and goddess or according to religious belief, when we worship, we are supposed to wash our hands, we are supposed to take bath or we are not supposed to touch these things, these are the pure, these are the impure. All these things are part of culture of sanitation. Same way, when we say that we have to wash not only our hands, we should maintain clean in our area or we should offer if any guest comes a glass of water for um, facing his hands or facing his um, face etcetera, washing his face etcetera. In that particular context, if these are the different cultural traits through which we learn that oh, okay, this is prevalent culture in our society and we should train our next generation also. So, from that angle it is said that it is, it transmits socialization, transmits culture from one generation to another generation. Then it is ultimately next is development of personality. When we use the word personality, generally erroneously it is considered that personality means the particular dress, then the hair is style, the particular type of shoes. Of course, these things are part of, but it is not the totality the personality. Personality includes a number of other things like your behavioral pattern, like your outlook, the way you show your gesture, the way you develop your eye contact, a number of other things are part and parcel of personality. So, when we say that personality development, socialization process prepares you to, pre to present anywhere in a particular way. So, for example, you may learn in professional life, you talk about the hard skills and soft skills. Hard skills are your general degrees and diploma. You may be having expertise in particular branch of your field and soft skills are related to these personality traits. So, when you learn in the society, you are supposed to learn that how to maintain that, how to behave in a particular way. And in this particular way, it is not like that, that others are simply testing your knowledge. If you are sitting and you are crossing any corridor and lights are on, you are supposed to switch off the lights if it is not in use. When you are passing, you are not supposed to throw any wrapper and any other thing. These things are also part and parcel of personality development and you do not know that whether you are being watched by your superiors or not. So, when we say that development of personality, not only from other academic uh, angle, but also that whether you are sanitation sensitive or not, you are environment friendly or not, when you are using particular thing, it is okay or not, or it is going to affect the society in which particular way. All these things you are supposed to understand, this is the meaning of development of personality. Then we talk about formal and informal. Of course, form socialization is formal and informal. What you learn from your parents, from your relatives, from your friends, these learning process are informal. Means, you learn, but without any strict rules and regulations, you do not know even sometimes that well, I have learned these things, your personality traits, how to uh, follow the cultural norms, patterns prevalent in your society, how to take uh, food, how to wash our fruits, how to wash our hands, these things are small things. But formal socialization means, when you learn something, if you join any office, you enter any university or college, then your behavior is that is known as formal. For example, when you see that, okay, I am supposed to throw my wrapper in a dustbin, that is pure formal, because you may find uh, the notice written here that use dustbin. The moment you see that, that uh, notice the use dustbin, you automatically learn, okay, it is a part of this culture that I am supposed to. So, learning process in socialization is also in the two ways 
formal and informal. Next is socialization converts human being into a social being. Of course, we all are human being, but we stay in the society as it is said that man becomes man only among men. So, we have to survive, we cannot ignore the importance of society. No one can say that well I can may stay alone, because we are human being, we need support from the human being. Maybe human being of this type of society or that type of society that may vary, but we cannot ignore the importance of society as such. So, society plays important role and socialization plays important role in converting human being to social being, because ultimately birth takes place pure biological children, but then ultimately he or she has to survive in the society by becoming human being to social being, because we all are social individual, we have to survive in the society. So, from that angle it plays important role in that. Next stage it is a dynamic process, as you all know that socialization process, because society is dynamic, it is said nothing is permanent except change. So, society keeps on moving, when society keeps on moving, culture is also dynamic, culture keeps on changing, when society is dynamic, when culture is dynamic. So, you are supposed to learn the norms, patterns, behavior of the society and it is not like that your grandparents behavior, the way they were taught by their parents and now you are being suggested taught by your parents is totally different, because according to norms, patterns and culture you are supposed to and if norms and patterns kept on changing, you are supposed to learn the changed behavior or what is prevalent culture in that society. That is why it is dynamic. For example, recently in these 10, 20 years, we are more conscious about the sanitation issue. Earlier, maybe it was not part of our socialization process that well be careful and recent example is after the COVID-19, well we were conscious, but after COVID-19 now it is like our socialization process that we keep on telling others also that well wear the mask or maintain the distance or keep on washing your face or hands or sanitize yourself and certain other things. Well, before COVID-19, this was not part of our socialization process. Now, even in office, you may find number of instructions that use the mask or sanitize yourself. These instructions are there. So, whether in formal life or informal life, number of things have been added. It clearly indicates that it is the result of dynamic process means it keeps on changing. It was not realized before COVID-19. So, it was not part of our socialization process. Now, when we are realizing that well it is a must, so we keep on telling the juniors, subordinates or the children that well you are supposed to behave in a particular way. So, from that angle it is said that socialization is a dynamic process. Then of course, socialization varies from society to society, as we just discussed it is not fixed. So, you may find that okay, I am behaving in this particular way, but my friends behavior is different. I worship my god and goddess in this particular way, but they do not believe in that. They are having different type of god, they are having different type of rituals, they are having different type of dress, they are having different type of interaction with the parents, interaction with the friends. So, these things are obvious because you belong to particular society. So, dear learners, you are supposed to behave according to the norms pattern established by your society, because you are member of your society. So, certain things are typical to your society. So, you may have different faith in particular god and goddess, you may belong to different religious group, your other friends may belong to different religious groups. So, naturally there will be different type of behavior in your behavioral pattern and their behavioral pattern. Same way according to the geographical requirements, so far as sanitation is concerned, you may be from coastal area, another may be from the another area, another may be from another area. Accordingly, they are being socialized that well you are supposed to behave in a that particular way or these things are part and parcel of that. So, socialization process as we discussed that it is dynamic means it varies from time to time. 
in the same way it varies from society to society. That is why we say that well perhaps simply by your behavioral pattern others may comment that okay, you belong to that area. It means through your behavioral pattern you are the brand ambassador of your society. When you are going outside you are representing your society and family. That is why dear learners you are supposed to be very careful when you are behaving you do remember you are representing your society simply with your behavioral pattern others get the feedback ok. This is the way people of that area they behave. So, do not think that it is me only and my behavior whether my personality traits matters or not. Be careful your personality traits your behavioral pattern matters a lot because you are resembling your normal social patterns of your society. You are representing your social patterns and culture so that others may understand ok this is your learning process. So, that is why we have to learn from according to the society and when we go out of society for example, when you are in any school college or you are in job then of course, during your professional life you are not supposed to stick to your norms and patterns because certain common norms and patterns are there. You may greet in different way, but when you are there in particular profession they if they are having different type of greeting style you are supposed to be trained that ok this is the way you are supposed to greet others you have to learn that. That is why it is said that it is a lifelong process that in your personal life you may greet in different way, but when you are joining any profession you have to greet in the way that profession requires. You have to wear the dress according to that profession if that profession is having any typical dress. You cannot say that no this is my folk dress I will wear that. You may wear in your informal lifestyle, but when you join, join any profession and that profession is having a typical dress you are supposed to follow. So, from that angle it is said that socialization varies from society to society. When we discussed these different features you all are aware that well it is not so easy to learn something because just from before birth till death we keep on learning. So, throughout the lives we keep on learning is it so easy that we can easily learn or only the parents or brothers and sisters or teachers in school they are capable enough that they will learn everything they will teach everything and we will learn everything from only these 4 5 individuals. Of course, not there are number of individuals in the society to help you out and it is known in technical terms in socialization process as an agent and these agents are some agents are primary agents more important in your life some agents are not that much important they are secondary agents in life. So, there are different agents and these agencies play major role in molding your psyche molding your personality and then you say that yes I have learned from these different sources. So, there are different agencies of socialization process now we will discuss that how these different agencies help us behave in a particular way. So, that we can make uh, positive things regarding the sanitation in the society. So, let us discuss with these different agents of socialization process. The first and foremost important agent of socialization process is a family. Of course, birth takes place in family. So, initial things first we come in close contact with mother only then gradually we learn to interact with brothers and sisters and the father or other close relatives. So, we are sure that well just imagine that when children cries mother easily understand that she needs water or what is her or his requirement. So, simply by gesture simply by other symbols when we are relaxed that ok mother wants uh, mother thinks that I need particular thing gradually children grow and so she or he starts learning in the family simple thing how to take food who is the what is the greeting style how to interact with others and then gradually develops that well this is my culture I belong to this particular caste because the moment birth takes place certain things you automatically get that is known as ascribed status. Dear learners there are two types of status that you are having. One is known as achieved status, another is known as 
ascribed status. Ascribed status is known as that, for that you do not do anything. Automatically, you get all those things. That is known as ascribed status. For example, the moment birth takes place, you get your identity in particular caste. You get your gender identity. You get your religious identity. You get that, okay, you belong to this particular area. Your age, all these things are ascribed status. You are not supposed to make any efforts of it. At the same time, certain status are sorry, achieved status. In achieved status, you have to achieve particular thing. Ascribed status, you are not supposed to do anything like your age, like your gender, like your caste, like your religious group. These things are your ascribed status. You automatically get. But when you, we talk about the achieved status, you have to achieve that particular thing. Means in achieved status, you have to make efforts. You have to, it is based upon your interest, based upon your inclination, based upon your merit. So, then you achieve particular thing, then you get that status. So, family automatically provides you certain status that is ascribed status, means automatically you get the moment birth takes place. And accordingly, these ascribed status, family starts teaching you, telling you that look, you belong to this caste, these are the do's and don'ts related to your caste. Look, you belong to this religion, these are the different do's and don'ts of this religion. Look, these are, you belong to this gender, you are supposed to be having that particular way. So, certain things are automatically you get in the family. So, from that angle, it is said that family is most important and primary agency of socialization process. Then you start learning with playing with your playmates or peer groups. Well, you know that I believe this is my caste, this is my uh, age, this is my uh, religion, you learn about that. Your friends and number of important things you learn when you are interacting with friends. Take simple example, which during your child, childhood days, you may be not that much aware that, okay, I am learning this particular thing. Take simple example, at initial stage, child gets everything he or she wants. I want this particular toy, I want this particular spoon, this particular food. Generally, the parents satisfy uh, the child. But when, so child is not aware till date that there is one word called no, because he or she gets everything. So, he or she feels that, okay, in this world, everything we can easily get, because I get everything. So, everyone gets. When you start, as the child starts playing with the playmates or friends, Suppose particular child says that, well, I play with the red ball. Another child also says, no, 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 I will play with the red ball. Then again, the child says, no, I will play with the red ball. If only one red ball is there, only one child will play with the red ball. Gradually, it seems very simple thing. You may not pay sufficient attention to it, but dear learners, try to understand, these are the very small things, but play very major role in individual's life. At that juncture, the child learns that there is one world called no, and all my desires will not be fulfilled. That big lesson he learns while playing with peer group, playing with friends. Simply by rejecting no, I will not allow you to play with the red ball. The big lesson he gets, and that lesson he needs throughout his life. In the same way, when your friends your past comments or when you see that, well, my friends are not uh, doing open defecation, my friends are not throwing anything here and there, and my friends, they behave in a particular way. Then you also learn from friends also that, well, they use the dustbin. I should also use. When they behave in a particular way, you also learn. So, in peer group, you learn how to behave in a particular way, so that we may play major role in developing healthy sanitation society. Next is when we interact with the neighbors. Neighbors play important role in your life. How? Because if they may belong to your caste, religion, another group, they may not. When they do not belong to your caste and religious group, then you learn a lots of things. For example, till date you are aware with, okay, this is only the one type of god and goddess or dress or folk song, etc. You start learning with different types of food, different types of dress, different type of religious other things. So, neighbors play important role in that and 
then you learn little bit different uh, discipline also when you are visiting neighbors uh, place normally your parents will teach you do not do like, like that do not touch others and when you sit there sit properly do not throw here and there all these trainings are being given but unfortunately our children are children they do not stick to those lessons but they are being trained and when you sit at the neighbor's house you being so formal you become conscious that okay i am being watched by so you uh, place the wrapper in a particular way you use the dustbin you do not roam around his, their uh, household so you are just maintaining the disciplined life so in neighbors also we learn a number of things next is when we enter the school and college that is most important part of any individual's life because this is the first time you learn something about discipline this is the first time you learn something about the timing this is the first thing you learn something about formal life you may interact with your family members anyway but when you are there in the school when you are there in the college you learn that okay there are other individuals also so you sit in a proper way then you learn how to interact with others others are behaving in a particular way i am also supposed to behave in a particular way and certain other things so far as sanitation related is that you learn for example there are different competitions in the school and colleges you learn how to prepare best out of west this best out of west is also related to environment and sanitation you protect the environment by using those waste material one thing and then you become very conscious that okay if we use that well if we follow certain rules and regulations and other competitions are being organized in the school and colleges when you participate in any debate any quiz any speech and other thing in school and colleges then you learn certain things related to sanitation and then you imbibe those in your personality traits at the same time you tell your brothers and sisters in your family and schools and colleges and then you spread that culture so uh, school and colleges or other academic institutions play important role in explaining the message or giving the message related to sanitation you may have to write a particular article or in even the different books and other things you may learn something simple example when your teacher says or teachers behave in a particular way you learn that okay my teacher is behaving in a particular way we have to learn or certain things when you practice in school and colleges then you may learn okay this is environment friendly only or we are supposed to behave in a particular way tips take simple example when your teacher suggests you that okay write an assignment but do not submit assignments in plastic cover because you will grade, get the grades and marks based on your written content so do not use that plastic material or cover for submitting your assignments when your teacher says something this is the lesson you can easily get okay yes i should concentrate on writing my content and in that way your teacher is also protecting the environment and you are also playing active role in protecting your environment by not using the plastic files as submission of assignments so a number of other things you also learn in the family or in this case in the school because it is the formal institution and the first time in children learn when he or she enters the school and at later is college and universities next is marriage marriage is considered important for male and female because it totally depends upon adaptability wife and husband both are supposed to show the adaptability more they are ready to adapt more they will be successful in the life so at the time of marriage or marriage as an institution trains the individual to adjustment and in this particular case we learn how to maintain the adjustment at the marriage level next there are occupational groups of course when you join any office when you join any professional life you are supposed to learn number of do's and don'ts that look don't don't do that there are clear cut restrictions clear cut uh, punishment rules and regulations so in occupational group you learn your behavioral pattern that well my office 
follows this particular thing, we should not waste the water, we should not misuse the electricity, we should not throw the garbage and number of other things are already there or some institutions are they are involved in the environment related activities, sanitation related activities, you actively participate in that. So, occupational groups also train individuals to learn something or more about the sanitation. Then media, of course, different advertisements are there even by the children during the COVID-19 uh, period, the advertisements like wash your hands, maybe they suggest you that use this detergent or that detergent, that is not important, but you are supposed to learn. At the same time, when we see any movie, when we watch any serial or other things or go through the newspaper articles and journals, we learn a number of things related to that, okay, in that particular area through research you come to know that well it is good or it is bad to use that, how to use herbs, how to maintain the natural thing, if you protect the uh, jungles, if you protect the mountain, it will protect you, all these lessons we go learn through the media. Then there are other different agencies which are not included in that, for example, your religious group, you may belong to particular religion. So, according to your religion, religion teaches you that okay, this is your religion you are supposed to, in this religion you are supposed to worship the particular tree, particular plant and as matter of fact in that particular way, religion teaches you that well you should protect that river, you should protect that uh, tree, you should protect that particular thing and in that particular way you not only protect the tree, protect the river, protect the pond, but at the same time you play very active role in maintaining the environment very clean, at the same time you satisfy your God and Goddess or according to your belief. So, there are number of agencies or if you are joining any club, if you are joining any sanitation club, if you are joining any other agencies, so there are number of agencies, they can play active role as part of as part of the socialization process, they may train you, because through socialization process you maintain a disciplined life, because we just discussed there are number of agencies, they are there to protect you, they are there to train you. So, you feel relaxed that I have been training, just imagine one gets training in professional life by one agency and he or she learns for the particular professional life, when socialization process is there and it is there to train you throughout your life, you maintain the discipline life, because ultimately there are number of individuals in your different life, they work as a source of in inspiration for you, that okay, he or she belongs to that particular stature, he or she behave in a that particular way, I should also or for example, you are in a particular area where you do not see that any wrapper is uh, spread anywhere then you may feel hesitate in throwing particular wrapper because of the particular maintained culture. So, when the particular type of culture is already there, you feel hesitate in disturbing that culture. So, through socialization process, you also lead disciplined life because you are self conscious every time you come to know about do's and don'ts, do not do that, do that. So, you are always self conscious that whether I am okay or not. I am doing perfect thing or not, I am my behavior is sanitation sensitive or not. So, all these things are clearly there, because ultimately you have to pass, you carry on the culture of sanitation, whether this particular behavior is there or not, or my other colleagues are learning that or not, or you are always conscious that I am observed, I am being watched by a number of individuals. So, that particular thing is also there and when you are behaving in a particular way, you are supposed to behave that okay, this is my formal life, this is my informal life, as we discussed that in socialization process, it is formal, informal both, you learn this is the way I am supposed to behave in a formal life and this is the way I am supposed to behave in an informal life. Here I am reminded of one of the renowned uh, dramaturgical analysis by Irving Goffman. Irving Goffman in his magnum opus, the presentation of self in everyday life. Irving Goffman talks about dramaturgical analysis and he says that there are two reasons, two stage 
and that is front region or back region. What happens in back region and front region is that back region we are like the informal behavior as you behave in formal uh, informal setting like your mother with your mothers and father and front reason is that for example when you are going to face any interview when you are in office with your boss i mean that is pure formal setting so the same way when in dramaturgical analysis goffman suggests us that we behave in a two ways one is formal another is informal same is there we are always conscious that well i am supposed to behave in this particular way through socialization process we learn that fine we have to learn these things keeping in mind my training keeping in mind the way i learned something from my parents or in my with my colleagues or superiors in my uh, formal life accordingly we learn dear learners there are number of theories related to socialization process for example given by mead given by sigmund freud but most appropriate theory which we can discuss in this limited time is given by charles hurton cooley which theory is typically related to our purpose that is related to socialization and sanitation charles hurton cooley gives one theory that name is theory of name is theory of looking glass self charles hurton cooley explains his theory of looking glass self as socialization process theory in this theory he says that why do we use the mirror if i ask you dear learners why do you use mirror in your personal life you generally may say that for seeing that well i am good everything is my hair is good or not my dress is good or not fine this is one aspect then again if i have ask you what more you may not say your another aspect that if your hair is not good if your dress is not good you modify you correct or even you change the dress to look good same way same thing is there in the society also kule says that society the members of the society they work as a mirror a looking glass as we see in the mirror that whether i am looking good or not same we see in the mirror or in the eyes of the society that whether i am looking good or not the same way as mirror will not display any message that you are not looking good your hair is not good your dress is not good but we are supposed to understand that well it seems that this particular thing is not good same is applicable to society also when you enter particular area when 10 people they are there you enter then you consider that well this is my glass and you want to judge that whether i am accepted there or not you just imagine a scenario when you enter 10 friends are there the moment you enter all the 10 friends start gossiping among themselves they ignore you they continue with their discussion the moment you enter they hardly pay any attention one situation another situation the moment you start entering that room the moment they say you they all come up with and they give you a warm hug they all welcome you these are the two different situation in first situation you can easily understand that well i am not accepted by my these friends so either i should change my behavior or i should do something i am sure that i am not acceptable to this type of group in another group you easily understand that well i am well accepted by this group i am well accepted by these friends in these examples it is not like that friends they tell you no 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 you are not acceptable or in another situation they are not going to tell you yes we accept you but you are supposed to draw that conclusion based on their gesture based on their eye contact based on their feelings so in that way you get the contact so same is there for example you are going for open defecation you are throwing any garbage here and there it is not like that every time police will be there or some others will be there to tell you no no stop doing that but if they show you particular type of gesture if they do not accept you in future if they start ignoring you tomorrow onwards 
then you gradually understand that perhaps my this behavior is not accepted in this society. I should change my behavior. As your mirror suggests, then you change your dress, same way you may stop open defecation tomorrow onwards and then you may see that next day onwards they accept you well. So, these are the three steps in Kule says that first we see whether what is the response of the society. Then on that basis we try to understand whether I am acceptable to that group or not. And then you mix these two things, what is their reflection, what is your observation and then you finally conclude that yes, it is me. So, in totality in crux, Charles certain Coulee's theory of looking glass self can be explained in this particular way. It is said that according to this theory, you can understand that I am not what I think I am, I am not what you think I am, I am what I think you think I am. Simple thing is that I repeat, I am not what I think I am, I am not what you think I am, I am what I think you think I am. It means when I will conclude that what I am, your suggestions, your feedback is important, then based on your feedback, I will draw the conclusion that well, I think that my behavior or I think I am going to open defecation, this is not good. They are also through their gesture supported that yes, you should stop as soon as possible open do going out for defecation. And then I will conclude that yes, I think open defecation, I should change my behavior. So, in that particular way, we think it means our own importance is already there. It is not like that simply on others perception, we frame our idea. At the same time, when we think that well, they are also there, their idea is also important. In that particular way, society plays important role in molding our psyche, but that does not mean that only society is important. As it is very clear by Charles Hurton Coolidge's theory that you are also important, but society is also important on based on the feedback of these two, we finally conclude that yes, whether I am okay or not. In that particular context, if we apply that uh, Charles Hurton Coolidge's looking glass theory to this sanitation behavior, of course, sometimes you may feel that different ads are there or through other behavioral pattern, you think that okay, they are doing that is not good or when you do not like others behavior, you may think sometimes the okay, I am not also supposed to behave in that particular way. So, when you decide about yourself at the same time, when the members of the society, they all decide, you all are part of the particular society, you did remember you have a power you all think in the same direction, dear learners. And if you all will think in the same direction, if you do not want that well others should behave according to the proper sanitation behavior, you are not supposed to do anything, you are not supposed to issue any notice. If directly or indirectly through your gesture, by using the charge certain Coolidge theory, you start giving your gesture in a particular way you start ignoring the particular typical behavior of that individual. I assure you that within few days, that individual will change their mindset and then onwards, he or she may start his behavior. So, this theory can be applied anywhere, whether you are in society, you may use or whether you are in office. It is not always possible that you suggest your seniors or colleagues that well behave in a particular way, do not do that, do not throw the garbage here and there. Then do the simple thing, try to apply this theory. When they are doing particular thing, you indicate through your gesture, you do not use any word, you, you, you do not write anything, but simply through your gesture, if you tell them that look, what you are doing is not good. You are, your gesture will be sufficient for him and that will work as a warning. So, whether you are in office, whether you are in society, whether you are in college, whether you are in public life or private life, you can use this particular theory to change the total behavioral pattern of the individual 
as you all know that sanitation is more related to behavioral pattern. It is not simply that it is related to scarcity or it is related to finance. Of course, economy does play important role, but it is more of a behavior related why we are discussing it as part of the sociological understanding because social norms, patterns, values play major role in changing the attitude, changing the perception, developing the outlook. And if we change the outlook, if we change the perception, if we create that atmosphere in the society, then we do not need that particular type of economic burden or we do not need to paste any advertisement or we are not supposed to stick any bells that okay, do that do's and don'ts. Because it, if we imbibe that, if we create that atmosphere, if we start learning and if, when we are learning, of course, it will be transmitted through next generation also when we are behaving in a particular way in office, others will also immediately start behaving in that particular way. So, this is all about real learners in brief, how does socialization play important role in maintaining good sanitation in your society, in your office, in your nearby areas. This is all about this lecture and I have uh, uh, taken help from these books for preparing this lecture and these books may be useful for you for explaining it. And these books are as follows, H. M. Johnson, Sociology, A Systematic Study, B. K. Nagla's Sociology of Sanitation, B. K. Nagla's article, Problem in Sanitation in India, Does Culture Matter, Richard Pais's book, Sociology of Sanitation, Bindeswar Pathak's edited book, Sociology of Sanitation, Environmental Sanitation, Public Health and Social Deprivation. Asis Saxena's book, Sociology of Sanitation. So, I hope you will imbibe the personal in your personality traits, you will maintain that culture of sanitation and this is all about this lecture. In our next lecture, we will concentrate on dis uh, discussing the environmental issues and sanitation. This is all for today's lecture. Learners, thanks a lot for your patience hearing. Hi, my name is Gillette Sam uh, and I teach uh, sociology at IIT Kanpur. Uh, today I am going to tell you about uh, the different characteristics uh, of the movement of things uh, around the world that are associated with globalization. Uh, we refer to these kind of movements as global flows. Now, um, the concept of global flows uh, is quite important and it is important for us to understand the uh, different ways in which these flows might occur. Now typically uh, when people talk about uh, the movement of uh, things from one place to another in, uh, in the context of globalization, uh, they are under the misconception that things tend to flow uh, from abroad into the place where they are living. Uh, in a, in a very sort of st stereotypical manner, uh, there is this idea that with globalization, much of the movement that occurs is from Western countries into non-Western countries. Now, uh, as sociologists, we know that uh, actually global flows are multidirectional. So, which means that as much as there is a movement of flows from Western countries into non-Western countries, uh, there is an equal amount of movement uh, of flows from one non-Western country to another non-Western country and in fact uh, a movement of flows from non-Western countries into Western countries as well. 
Uh, let us take the example of food for instance. Uh, you may be aware of uh, a type of food uh, which originated uh, actually in China and then goes on to Japan uh, called ramen. Uh, for instance, uh, the popular brand Top Ramen that is consumed in India is an example of ramen. 